It has been a very, very busy afternoon, evening for my guest, Kim Saeed. If you have not got a chance to do so, I am urging you like, comment, share, follow, like, comment, share, follow. Do not waste your time on pages that mean nothing to your growth, to your recovery. Like, comment, share, follow the lady herself, Kim Saeed. Uh, please do so. But uh, if you're first time passing through, welcome to Narc Abuse TV Network. That's Narc Abuse TV Network, where we have the Narc Abuse TV show. We have the Coach Jess show. And we also have uh, the Hannah Speaks show as well. Uh, I man, look at that, which you wrote on the screen. I like that. Sassy. Soulful says Kim is the goat. <laughs> so that's a good thing, especially in, in, in uh, sports, right? Uh, the goat means you're the top. You're the top one. Uh, Kim is the goat. Uh, everybody else is filing in. Uh, the real Susie Waller is here. Walla. What's up, Walla? Okay. Uh, Art for Annie. Anastasia. The pack coach is back in. Everyone's starting to pile in. Uh, my man was here. Uh, I inspire. Uh, he will be back on uh, next week as well in a couple of other shows. Uh, all of you, thank you. Get ready for something that uh, many of you are accustomed to that I do on this show. I'm about to do it with Kim. Uh, Kim is kind enough to come back for our third brief segment that we're going to have uh, somewhere around 30 minutes, uh, hopefully or thereabouts. Um, any of your questions that we did not get to, you will have a chance to have them uh, uh, read and uh, answered by Kim in a future set of shows that we have already planned to do together. Uh, so as many of you are coming in, I need you to do me a huge favor. Please go and like, comment, share, follow Kim's page. Go to her website, uh, her Facebook page, whatever, wherever Kim is, be there ahead of her and uh, welcome her and await her. Uh, I want you to do that. Uh, make sure you go and check out her boot camp. Okay. Oh, well, wait a minute. It's on the screen. There we go. Uh, the real Susie Waller says she is also in Kim's boot camp. And she talking about Kim. Kim is a lifesaver. So look, you've got testimonials right here in real time on Instagram, IGTV. Go and get a part of Kim's boot camp. Invest money into your emotional and mental well-being all right you know how this works less of me more of my guests they're the education i'm the goofball that brings you all of these people who mean so much to all of us so thank you for being here let's do this Ah, uh, we got you back. Uh oh, my um. Yeah, it's uh not cooperating. Yeah, I'm gonna have to reboot my uh, headset. Okay, go ahead and reboot your headset. I'll keep everybody company while you're doing that. Whatever you need to do, and uh, we'll bring you back in or whatever you need to do. Uh, I do want to mention a couple of things to everybody here. Uh, I want you to know. Um. I want you to know that Kim's going to be doing uh, some technical stuff here real quick as she reboots herself. Uh, I do need you to know that we do have the Coach Jess show back on the air this Saturday uh, at 1 p.m. West Coast time out here where I am here in California. And uh, she is also on at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Her show focuses on resiliency, relationships. Let me get my camera in here. Let me do that. Kim is rebooting herself. Uh, she covers resiliency, relationships, and recovery. Uh, she has a uh, an R and R system uh, that uh, you will get a kick out of because it is very, very productive for many. Uh, the way she goes about her coaching style. So, by all means, hopefully, you will be able to be a part of that. Everybody else is rolling in. We're going to get see if we can get Kim in here. Thank you for being here. 
Narc Abuse TV Network. Hello. Hello. There we have it. Rebooted and ready to go. Um, as my father would say, if you don't have a lot of money, son, in order to get honey, you got to have be able to dance and have music. So uh, welcome to a retired broke man. Like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm not broke. Wait a minute. I don't want the government to know that. I'm broke. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyhow, everybody is chiming in. A lot of things have been happening uh, here. Um, do you have your own page? Uh, I'm not sure what that means because we both do. Um, we both do. Thank you, Mama Razzie, for that question. Um, anyhow, um, you've got a lot that was happening, but now we get to get to it. Last segment, my friend. Last segment. <sighs> Three stretch. episodes. Yes, this is it, the home stretch. There are things about you a lot of people don't know, but uh, Sassy Soulful uh, has mentioned a couple of things. The main thing she mentioned was about your boot camp. Now, we didn't really talk about it in the, in the previous segment, uh, the last one, but the first one we did. I'm looking at a lot of new names that were not here before. Can you just mention it again? Um, uh, could you talk about it a, a little bit to give everybody an idea of what they can experience, uh, the positivity they will experience by joining your, your boot camp? Certainly. Well, my boot camp was created from the outline that I used to use in my coaching practice. And I still do some coaching here and there, but I decided to make a program out of it because I wanted to help more people. And uh, so we have that coaching curriculum in there, but there are lots of interactive healing exercises in there. There are things to do after you have gone no contact that are going to help you heal each of your five senses. Um, and also, there are bonuses in there, guided meditations, again, interactive exercises. And I have had my program reviewed by people in the mental health and neuropsychological communities. And they have also given the program their, um, their approval. And it's shared also in domestic violence centers across the states. Right. So. You are not someone that people can just overlook. You should be recognized for all of the hard work and all of the energy you put into helping others. Thank but you. you have your own story. You have your own story that many do not know. One of the joys, again, of doing this is to bring people that others have no idea exist. It may sound strange for someone who's uh, had a long history of helping people as you have, but we have... A new generation uh, that is we coming did. up. And uh, I didn't really know anything about that until we, we came back for our second season in February. And we were, we were bombarded with all of these young people coming in going like, okay, who is this person? And I'm going like, seriously, you don't know who that is? I mean, then I had to think about it. They, they don't. And they need to. And they're finding you and others uh, when you're able to be here on the show. And that's why I have to say this before we get started into our conversation. We have asked a number of people to be on the show that we feel will fit with my strange personality and will make good production value for the show. Uh, we have had very few, literally I can count them on one hand, that have told us that they won't come on the show until we get 10,000 followers. Uh, and you have... <laughs> I don't know. I have never asked why. I have never asked why. I just let it. I let the conversation die and delete it from my, my file, except in my head. I know exactly who they are. And, and uh, I find it. I find it an honor that you're here today. Thank along with you others so much. that have been on. It really means a lot uh, to me and my daughters and myself that you're here. But I can't even describe to you what has happened during the commercial break and my phone blowing up. Because oh people, goodness. people are just loving you for being here, really and they know that we started that. from zero. So thank you. I just wanted to tell you that it means a lot. Um, now I'm going to torture you. I mean, now we're going to move on to the part of the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> part of the show because you trusted me to to come on. Uh, I want you to know that uh, 
I have to turn to your Instagram page because out of the many posts that you make, I have got to pull up uh, a couple that appeal uh, to uh, my audience. I know this for a fact. I almost test market everything that happens on this show before I actually do it. Oh. <laughs> and uh, this is one of the ones that means a lot to uh, people. You had a posting that you made on, uh, let's see, September 8th. September 8th, you made this posting. And a number of people that commented on the posting actually watched this show. Uh, so they were excited to find out you were coming on. Uh, oh, this is one of the posts so that uh, meant something to them. Uh, I'm sorry, but I mean to cut you off. I just want to. Uh, let you know that it, this posting meant a lot. Uh, the posting is, this is what it says, everybody. Uh, if you're not there, please go to uh, Kim's page. Uh, you will see the posting, and you can uh, just hit the follow button. If you're going to go there, just hit the follow button, you know? And if you're doing that, you might as well go to the website, and you just, just keep going. <laughs> so anyhow, the posting says, I'm your publicity agent for the day. Anybody that comes on, I'm their publicity agent for the day. They don't have Thank to pay me. You. All right. It says, uh, we must stop expecting that suddenly narcissists will change and be good parents. Most narcissists have a narcissistic parent themselves. All they know is utter dysfunction and lack of accountability. Now, what I find very encouraging about your post is you go and you say this in the comments. When I think about my own expectations back when I first left my narcissistic X, I kept expecting him to be like me. I kept expecting him to care for our son the way I did. But along the way, I had to face reality. I had to get out of my head, let go of those expectations, and really focus on the reality of the situation. You go on and you mention a number of other things. If you are already on the page, everybody. You can continue to read the rest if you like. But Kim, Kim, please give us some insight on this lack of accountability and dysfunction that you dealt with before you had to face reality. Wow, where do I begin? Well, you know, when you think about a parent, you would expect them to feel protective over their child and wanting the best for them. But what happens is children become pawns and children are used by narcissists to hurt the, um, the normal parent. Narcissists have no problem throwing their own children under the bus. And I feel for people, but I'm also shocked because I see people struggling and they're wanting the narcissist to be a caring parent. Mm -hmm. even though they don't have any reason to expect that. And what we have to remember, which we touched on earlier in our last segment, I think it was, narcissism begets narcissism. Unfortunately, children who grow up in a dysfunctional home, they are at risk of developing adverse childhood experiences. This is really what determines if someone is going to eventually get into a toxic relationship later on. But as I mentioned before, narcissism is a defense mechanism. Mm. And it is learned because someone has a dysfunctional parent. So this Mm. is the role model they have. And we can't expect them to behave any differently and how narcissists are going to behave. That includes, you know, going through divorce, trying to take sole custody of the children, um, not wanting to pay child support, just dragging on, taking the non-toxic uh, parent back to court over and over, making false allegations, parental alienation, refusing to let the child go to therapy. I mean, the list never ends unfortunately, and we just have to fight the good fight and do the best we can, but um, we just can't expect them to change. There, there is only so much, there's only, 
there's only so much energy then that a person can put into that situation, right? And they need to know, well, I kind of like the way you phrased it, they have got, you know, a person may need to face reality, that they're dealing with someone who lacks accountability and is dysfunctional. Right. So never make verbal agreements. Never do that. If, if you need to, you know, go to your attorney, you need to go to your attorney and give them the, tell them what's happening and modify the custody agreement. Do whatever you need to do. I've done that myself. Many times over the past 10 years, I've taken my ex back to court several times uh, because of these very things. And now, really, it doesn't I, end. I have to ask about that because that seems to be a common part, at least, I don't know, I'm hearing in my small world, that just about going back to court. You just mentioned it. Um, some feel that, well, you know, we made this verbal agreement or we had this in writing. And yeah. he's not or she's not living up to it. Just let it go. You know, I'll keep the peace by if we let it go. No bueno. Bad idea. No. And the reason, well, obviously you can't expect the narcissist to ever make good on what they promise, right? Got it. But not Got only it. that, if you are not standing up and you're not going to your attorney and you're not trying to modify the custody agreement, then when you finally do go five years later, the narcissist is going to be like, I don't know what the problem is. We've been doing this the past five years. What's the problem now? Right. right. So really, you're just shooting yourself in the foot by not yeah. doing, you know, going to court. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you're pretty much setting yourself up to, to get damaged later. Uh, yeah. Getting stuff in writing, though, is very important based upon what you said. Some are walk just now walking into this type of a life that they're divorcing uh, someone who's narcissistic or whatever the case may be, toxic, and just kind of taking their word for it because it seems like they're being amicable or they're, they're, they're being agreeable. But the lack of accountability will come back as well as the dysfunction at some point. Based upon what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Yeah. They'll agree to anything just to get you off uh, off of their case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's just a matter of time before you realize they don't really have any intention of following through on this agreement. Yeah. No intention on following through. Everybody, please keep that in mind uh, if you find yourself in this situation um, because you, you can't always count on the legal courts to work that's favorably. True too. That's you know, true that's, too. A, that's a gamble in itself. It really is a gamble, unfortunately, to be honest with you. All the court stuff is just a paper trail. Yeah. You know, I just this year, back in the, at the beginning of the year, I just got the custody agreement um, exactly the way I wanted it. How long so did before, that take? It took 10 years. That's correct. I'm sorry, but that's crazy. That is absolutely because you're dealing with somebody that doesn't they're not going to be accountable and they're not going to be agreeable. They're not open to any agreement yeah. and they're going to drag it out. Right. Pretty much. They're going to create a hitch and a problem, a hitch and a problem, no matter which way you turn at some point. Right. Right. And somebody needs to be prepared for that. If they're stepping into this, they can't be thinking well, they sent me this nice thing, and this email is so nice. Okay. Don't fall one for of it. The, right. One of the saddest um, incidents that I learned about through a coaching client was, okay, she was divorcing her husband. They shared children, and he came over like the night before the court hearing talking about let's, you know, work together for our family, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Gets into yep. the court hearing the next day and just completely blindsided her, and she lost custody of the kids. Wow. Yeah. Okay, everyone, please. And many of you know, because you write me and you have talked to me, and I've talked with you, I can't help you, but that's why we put these shows on, so I can find people that can say just what you heard. Please be very careful, right, is what you're saying, Kim. They need yes. to be very careful I mean, look at this scenario that uh, she just mentioned to everybody here. And some of you I see in the chat, we've talked, listen, be mindful of this. Don't fall for it. You know, I've had people say, well, Paxton, though, they're saying this. And, you know, I need to be more forgiving and understanding. You can be yeah. all of those things, but you can still extremely be very careful when you're dealing with that person, though. 
<laughs> and you especially when it comes, yeah. Go ahead. especially when it comes to your children. Yeah, Always absolutely. Expect the narcissist to do the opposite of what they say yeah. they're going to do, and always expect the absolute worst. Yeah, expect the absolute worst. Uh, some of them are saying they believe you. They, <laughs> I believe, uh, 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 sassy soulful says I believe her because it's been three years for me, and he just won't stop despite court proceedings. And this is that's a common thing, right? Yes. That's the common thing to take place. I, I want to uh, get to something else. We talked about the boot camp. We talked about that posting. I have another posting that I want to highlight that uh, proved to be something that uh, uh, others found very encouraging. Uh, is that go right there? There we go. Okay, this posting you did six days ago. Ooh, it's still mm -hmm. fresh on your brain. Uh, here we go. Uh, I'm such a weirdo. All right, here we go. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to grow up one day. Uh, taking responsibility leads to having boundaries. So here we go. Taking the responsibility to search through the rubble of your previous life, gather up what you need or want to keep from the past, tend to your wounds, comfort yourself in hopefully healthy ways, and evaluate your relationship experiences. Now, with that buffet of information that is going to help someone heal, I'm going to pull this out. You could talk about uh, whatever you comfortably feel you want to highlight to everybody. But I'm going to pull out, you say, evaluate your relationship experiences. What does that mean for someone hearing that? Well, if someone's here listening to our live, then that means they have some toxicity in their relationship, right? Or they, or maybe they're already out, but there was some in the previous relationship. Right. So when you're trying to figure out your boundaries, it's going to be pretty easy to figure out, okay, what did I not like about this relationship? Mm-hmm. And this is going to be the springboard for your list of boundaries. I didn't like the lying. I didn't like the infidelities. I didn't like how uh, he he turned he or she turned all the neighbors against me. Um, so you those are the things that you're going to carry over, and you're not going to put up with that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, being a kind and understanding person doesn't mean you have to be a doormat. And I think yeah. a lot of people misunderstand that. So yeah. boundaries are, are what is going are going to keep you emotionally safe. And that's been the you know the main focus of our our live tonight to be you know keep yourself emotionally safe. You can't expect the narcissist is nope. ever going to to step up and be the one. You have to do it for yourself. And you have to make your boundaries, you have to put them in place, and you have to maintain them. Otherwise, you're, it's almost like a green light for manipulators just to continue mm -hmm. taking advantage and going out of the lines. Right. And don't be fooled by the charm, right, or the, the promises for the future. I mean, when have they ever kept a promise? <laughs> Okay, that's the go. <laughs> no, that no. Hold on a second. No, hold on a second. I gotta do this. <laughs> yes, just, that actually is a great way to retort back if somebody is in that position and they're making their promise and you're like, "Can you tell me the last time you kept your word?" I mean, to the right. full. And then exactly. say, when you when you come up with that, let me know. But right now, I gotta go. Just just you know, feel free to let me know. Put that in the letter. Send that. Send, right. Put that in the letter, as it were. That's a very good point. I like that because people can feel well. Okay, we had this horrendous fight, but they look contrite and they look like they're they're trying to make this work. They even did that, this or that. They went to therapy. So you know what? See, you just did that, and I was trying to say it without like disgust, <laughs> but you just you just shook your nervous system. Went like you had a little flashback there for a second. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, there's much more here, by the way, if you uh, go to uh, Kim Kim's page, you're going to see this posting. There's so much more there. Uh, we're not going to have time to delve into it now, but it will be a part of a discussion uh, sometime in the future that Kim and I are going to be doing for everybody here. Um, Kim, you've talked about the boot camp and a few other things. We've had a number of cards that we've talked about uh, here on the show. We've uh, 
we've had, hold on one second here, I'm going to do this right here. We've had uh, all of these cards, everybody can see that. If you missed the first two segments, uh, we've had a number of cards that we talked about here. Now, what were these cards? Well, we talked about Trauma Bond, uh, we talked about Red Flags, we talked about Hoovering from the Narc, Gaslighting, <laughs> uh, Keeping Our Focus was very important, uh, and we talked about Boundaries. Now we're down to three more cards, Kim. Okay. <laughs> I really hope you're buckled in. Um, we have three more cards uh, to talk about. Um, we're going to get to those in just a moment. We're not going to do them now. Anyhow, so, okay. so uh, what I do want to, to uh, highlight. In here. <laughs> I just given you a little time. Strap yourself <laughs> in. Uh, all of you that are uh, have uh, are part of the chat, the, the, rather the chat, the group chat that is here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Cake Away is here. Hello from Spain. They're giving you a shout out from Spain. Glad to hear Kim uh, from uh, from from, so, from afar. They're saying from afar. They're out there in Spain. They're saying hello from Spain. Uh, leave uh, no contact. Go ghost uh, says one mom's battle. IG page is a great source for protective parents. Uh, you have to find an attorney who is well educated in narcissism. Everybody's talking with each other. Thank you uh, for many of you that I haven't got a chance to uh, meet before that are passing through or. Uh, are going to be joining the channel. There is a live group chat that happens on each show. The audience is extremely interactive. You, you all, uh, all of you, my country voice is coming out here. Y'all, y'all have <laughs> been totally awesome um, helping each other. That's what happens a lot in these shows. So if you're feeling uh, a sense of I need to get some advice, you can come to the chat and get to make a new friend and support each other and so forth. Uh, I be dot k says hello uh to you as well uh, others that are joining in many of them finding you as we have touched on for the first time uh you're not wasting your time put the pizza down as i often say on this channel and and uh, <laughs> go buy a book uh, that belongs to kim or a course um you're going to benefit greatly i want to touch on something we talked about in the show prep we're going to talk about it more in the future on future shows that we will get uh, the chance to do together but you talked about being codependent or prolonged trauma bond from childhood. Uh, that's, that's my brief notes from when we were talking. Could you expand on that some more so others can get an idea before we get into our review of some of the yellow cards that we have here? Okay. But uh, codependent, prolonged trauma bond from childhood. Well, I mean, there have been people who entered into a relationship with a narcissist who didn't really have codependent tendencies uh, before meeting the narcissist. So it is something that can you can be conditioned to um, have those tendencies if you if you do have experience with a toxic relationship. But that aside. Uh, I believe codependency is again a prolonged a prolonged trauma bond from an earlier period in our childhood or maybe when we were teenagers that was never resolved, and so we go into adulthood, you know, with these unresolved tendencies from the trauma bond, and that's what leads us into dysfunctional relationships, because when we meet someone like that, it we may not consciously recognize it, but it feels the same. And so there's a little something in our psyche that kicks in and makes us want to please that person and makes us um, compliant with their wishes. Mm -hmm. It's just that inner child really wanting to please the other person. And that's a big part of why we don't have the boundaries. No, no. Being in that position where we want to please that person, where the inner child is is working uh, to maintain the peace and and be pleasant to be around, uh, uh, receive uh, affection, uh, attention, and adulation in a very well balanced way. That's okay in a normal relationship. Relationship, except unfortunately, they're dealing with a toxic person now, who's going to belittle them, berate them, badger them to the point they're going to take advantage of them, then that's when that codependent or interaction becomes dangerous because now they're dealing with somebody that's not normal. 
Right. And remember now, you're the expert. You're the expert. I'm not making a fact. I'm just I'm just stating in my no, brain. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm that's how it plays out. And, you know, again, this is why we're now realizing that this is coercive control because it involves all of those elements. You get to an emotional place, um, a traumatized place, and okay. it's these things that the abuser takes advantage of to control you. I mean... Uh, you know, all the things we talk, we've talked about uh, on this IG Live mm. are elements of coercive control. The only difference okay. is um, a lot of times that does escalate into physical violence, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to. But if it you doesn't look up have to escalate to that. And a person can be thinking, well, he didn't hit me. I mean, he raised his voice, but he didn't hit me. But the reality of it is. And I'm saying this as a father of daughters, <laughs> he's still crossing a line. It, he's still crossing a line because he's right. trying to intimidate or coercive yes, control. Exactly. And that coercive control may not be something some uh, an individual, a young lady is aware of it's because she's just now starting this journey of understanding narcissism. But you're saying this coercive control is starting to become a common aspect or expression that's used to de to, dic to determine what is being dictated to someone uh, from a narcissist. Right, and um, I'm glad you brought up before how your audience is becoming younger and younger yeah. because yeah. it might look a little different. So you might have a boyfriend oh. or a girlfriend Got who it. wants to go through your phone all the time, or they're very yeah. controlling yeah. about what you wear and Yep. what friends you hang out with, if they yep. even allow you to have friends. Yep. Um, you know, if there are parents out there who have a child who has a controlling girlfriend or boyfriend yep. and their grades start dropping, for example, or they, they lose um, interest in sports or whatever, those are signs yep. that they're in a controlling relationship. Uh, you, you just hit the nail on the head so many times. I'm getting all of that. And that's why we're trying to make sure we, we get as many as possible on because Many are writing that it's they've left in a relationship, but their daughter, mainly their daughter or son, but mainly it's, it's their daughters, are now in a relationship and they're in high school. With yeah. just the things you said, grades are dropping. Their, their passion for the sport that they were taking, it, they're losing all of it because all of their attention is going to this one individual. And it's not the normal teenager just, hey, I like this person. It's literally being consumed by another person uh someone exactly. here i just so you just so you know um uh, someone here is writing kim you are amazing i'm going to butcher your name here uh Kefilitra, i guess that's who that is uh is saying that you're amazing um Thank others you. are uh someone here is highlighting that uh, uh Celise is saying that she would just hide in the bathroom and then all was peaceful um, uh, a, I'm assuming she's uh, a younger follower. A younger say that follower, again. maybe. She's saying she's uh, in the bathroom. Uh, you do look very young there, my friend, that has posted this. Feel free to let us know. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name. I am Celise. I believe that's what it says. You just uh, mentioned the fact that she would go hide in the. I was always, they yeah, always say my mom trained me to put up with abuse, she says. Uh, so I'm. Uh, she, well, you know, I'm an old guy, so she looked young to me. Um, <laughs> no, uh, well, girl, you're still young. She says she's 45. <laughs> oh, she's talking about when she was growing up. Then. When she okay. was younger, yeah. Uh, others are saying that we have three daughters. It didn't matter. One was abused by her boyfriend in college. Uh, so they're agreeing with you with what you're saying, that uh, others are recognizing. No friends were allowed and separated from my parents as well is what Carrie Ann Jones says that she experienced. That's a common thing to separate, isolate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this happens on almost every case. Isolation. And the real sad thing is when the narcissist is able to turn a parent against their own child. I've seen where parents, Wait the a narcissist minute. move in, and the narcissist will convince the parent to kick their own child out of the house. So when you've got that going on, please, please really think about what's happening. 
because this is not good. It's going to destroy your relationship with your child for years, if it's even sal salvageable at that point. The narc moves in and becomes, as it were, the one running the show because they will use the, their their mate or the boyfriend, girlfriend, wife as yes. the villain. Make them out to be the villain even though they're the child of the parent of the... All right, I'm getting disgusted. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <That was> disgusting. <laughs> It is this. Thank you for touching on that about the codependent aspect uh, being something that's prolonged trauma. We come to the part of the show in which we're nearing the end, which means it's time for me to do a few things here. Three cards are here. Now you can't really see all of it. What's written behind it? Those are that's behind. The front is over here. Uh, I'm going to tell you what's behind it. One of them says, and I'll hold it up. It says. ABC, of course, that's backwards. Uh, so it says ABC. That's one card. The other one says DEF. And then the last card, it says XYZ. Now, people may ask themselves if they've never been here, has he lost his mind? And the answer is yes, <laughs> but it's my show. I can do what I want because I'm a big kid. And by the way, ladies, just for the record, don't let a man tell you that he's super serious and super cool. Because we all lose our coolness when we're about seven years old. Uh, men are goofy, <laughs> as I tell my daughters often, okay? They buy cologne just so we can look like we're grown up, okay? So we're always big kids. <laughs> men are big kids. So just thought I'd tell you that. You already know that, though. All right, here we go. A, B, C, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that, D, E, F, and X, Y, Z. Now, X, Y, Z, I will hold out because you can't pick that yet. Okay. A, B, C, and D, E, F, ooh, ooh, ooh. these two, ooh, ooh, ooh. which one would you like first? D, E, F. Okay. I'm going to read A, B, C instead. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. This is too funny. Okay, let me tell you. What really happened was I literally was going to put A, B, and C, three cards, right? And for some god-awful reason, Kim, I wrote A and immediately wrote B. And I went like, oh, shoot, how do I fix this? <laughs> <What's good? laughs> I don't want to. Me being a cheapskate didn't want to grab the other 15 billion cards that I have and throw that one away. I just, <laughs> oh, man, I can't help it. I'm the last of seven children, so I'm, I'm all about saving stuff. Anyhow, so <laughs> here we go. All right, uh, ABC is first. Uh, from the ages of 5 to 15, Kim, between the ages of 5 and 15, when you were 5 years old to the age of 15, how would you describe Kim between the ages of 5 and 15 as a young lady? <clears throat> wow, that's pretty personal. Um, if you had to take one or two or three words to describe who you were back then between the ages of 5 and 15, how would you describe yourself? Curious, fun-loving, and honestly, I did feel a little oppressed uh, because my parents were raised in the South and, you know, Southern Baptist and all that. So mm -hmm. my parents were pretty strict and... Um, They were dealing with their own trauma, so. Right. They were walking their own life and pattern of life. Uh, but you described yourself as curious, fun-loving, and to a measured degree, oppressed. Card number two, DEF card. Between the ages of 16 and 25, as a young woman, going from a young girl previously in the other card, and now to a young woman between the ages of 16 and 25. And no one had, you know, a lot of people that have come across the live today, they may not know you. But between the ages of 16 and 25, how would you describe two people who never knew you between those ages? What three words would you use to describe the young woman between the ages of 16 and 25 named Kim? Hungry for knowledge. 
a desire for achievement. But I was also a bit of a party animal. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yes, I was. Okay, okay, yes. go, girl. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so hungry for knowledge. Yep. And the second one was? Uh, I wanted to achieve great things. Yeah. Actually, I was in uh, community college because I wanted to be a social worker. But after okay. doing some volunteer work for that, I realized I couldn't do that because I've become a vigilante. <laughs> and so then I turned. To... I am not surprised. I am not surprised you said that. <laughs> but go ahead. So then I turned to uh, mental health, and um, okay, yeah, and then I actually ended up doing most of my uh, degree online later on in my thirties. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I've always been. I've always been uh, had a love for learning. Okay, you you've always had a, a hunger. Uh, a hunger yes. for knowledge right. and uh, for learning, achieving, um, uh, achieving great things uh, and knowing that there had to be a balance and you needed to, to have some fun. And uh, the term is party, which could take on so many meanings, but we're not going to touch that because <laughs> I respect you. I respect you. Okay. And I want to leave. We still have a project in October and December to do, so I'm going to leave that alone. But that leaves one more card left. Oh boy. And I'm glad. I'm glad you chose those cards. That's not true. That's not what just happened. So, so um, I'll, go ahead. You're going to say something before I tell you what people are saying about what's happening right now, right now. I'm uh, just waiting to hear what you're going to ask. <laughs> okay. Uh, some are saying thank you for sharing, uh, so forth. Uh, I love how calm Kim is. See how demeanor and voice is so soothing. I'm telling you, this lady's got a voice. If, if you put her in front of one of these expensive microphones, uh, four or $500 microphones, all of us uh, would use uh, your voice and what you say to soothe us to go to sleep at night. Oh, so, that's so uh, sweet. You can't, I'm just, I, I just state the fact. <laughs> if I was 20, out, 20 years old, I wouldn't say it. I'd be scared and people <laughs> make fun of me. But uh, I got to read this to you. Here we go. This is a three-part card. So I hope you're ready. Describe what your life was like before you met the narc. Describe for everyone what your life was like before you met the narc in three words. What, how would you describe it in three words or in, in uh, how would you describe in three words what the, the narc was like? By the way, if you guys are wondering why I keep doing that and keep saying it, I'm giving my, my guests a chance to, to think. So <laughs> I stall as much as I can. So what you say? What you say to that, Kim? I would say successful, okay. responsible, and compassionate. All right. Successful, responsible, and compassionate is right. how you would describe yourself before you met the knuckle before you met the knucklehead and the troublemaker. Successful, responsible, compassionate. Well, then we get to part two of this three-part question. Describe for everyone, now that they've had a chance to spend time with you in these two segments, nobody had to uh, go sign up for a webinar, none of that kind of stuff. You just come here for free, and you got to meet Kim today. So you better join the boot camp, or you don't embarrass me in front of my <laughs> guests, and they go like, I'm packing your, all your audience is cheap. <laughs> they won't spend no money. You guys, get the boot camp. Do like Sassy Soulful Lady does and get the boot camp. Don't embarrass me out here on social media. <laughs> Put the pizza down and go spend some money. You budget, Don't be cheapskate. I'll come look for you. Okay, here we go. Uh, second one. How, describe for everyone now the Kim that we see now, the Kim that has existed now, after leaving the NARC? I can do that, but I think there's a big piece of the, you know, the sandwich that's missing. I was leaving there. that for future <laughs> shows. Now you can, hey, come on now, Kim, you can't direct, okay. you can't direct the show too. Okay. I left that out on purpose for everyone to be thinking, oh, okay. he left something out. <laughs> I'm saving that on purpose without telling okay. you. So that I could tell you now in front of everyone. It just kind of, but uh, no, go ahead. I deliberately left that out. We're going to talk about that as a teaser for the upcoming shows that we're going to do together. But since you have left the NARC, since we have discussed before the NARC, 
Now we're going to talk about after the narc, because future shows we will discuss when you were with the narc. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so how would you describe yourself now, my friend? I would use the same three words. I'm still the same person I was before. <clears throat> the only difference is I have boundaries and I'm more empowered. Okay, so boundaries and more empowered. But you're still yes. successful, seeking success or being successful, uh, being responsible and compassionate. Last part, three part question. The last one, as we near the end of this show, Please describe for the audience, which is over 90% female that watch these, these shows. They don't believe me. They don't come here for me uh, and my long, beautiful, flowing hair. That's not what they do. <laughs> they, they come for the guests because often they tell me, Paxton, be quiet. I want to hear what the guest has to say. But uh, I just want to say this to you. You know, you got some amazing stuff happening on the screen. Uh, I'll have to send it to you when we're done. But uh, the real Susie Waller says, Kim is amazing with a big heart. Uh, complete Aww. blessing. Uh, there, you Listen, you got thank some love you. on the screen. Pat Coach, beautiful show, beautiful guest. Uh, thank you, uh, Pat Coach, for saying that. Others are finding you for the first time. Many are, are appreciating and showing your, their appreciation for all of your self-sacrificing hard work and vulnerability by telling your story. But right now, I need your assistance on this last Part. I need you to describe to everyone that is listening, mainly women watch the show, what it means to be emotionally safe, what it literally means from your perspective for the audience to understand, mainly a lot of young women, what does it mean to be emotionally safe from your perspective? Sorry, I felt a little <clears throat> emotional there. Um, it means you can get up in the morning and have a cup of coffee and not be the target of a verbal holocaust. It means you can go throughout your day without being attacked mentally, physically. It means you don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. And you can be your authentic self. You're not jumping through hoops. You're not um, doing the pick me dance. You're you're comfortable in your skin, and you feel good about yourself. You've um, you've described the life that many are trying to reach right now. That's the life that many are grasping. Not not like just reaching. I I, I misspoke. They're literally grasping as if, if they don't get that. Uh, as my guest actually said yesterday, she felt like she didn't want to go on anymore. That's why it means so much to me and my daughter that you're here today. Because people you. need to hear that they have worth value. They are not alone, but more importantly, they are wanted and needed, and they are enough. And people don't your words, your words mean that. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead, please. I was just going to say people don't realize what a miracle it is that they're even alive on the planet right now. Yeah. And that's the thing that narcissists do is they don't want you to see that. That's a good point. Uh, please, if anybody hears that, if you are stumbled across the show, many of you are regulars and, and, and are here, I see. Uh, but if you hear that, Please absorb that. You, if you feel you need to process it, good, but at least absorb what Kim just said. Being here in itself is a blessing that the narcissistic, toxic person, the self-absorbed person doesn't want you to see. Uh, so please know that, uh, I'm just going to take your words here, uh, Not <laughs> to not be a target, to wake up and not be a target, to wake up and not be attacked, to wake up and not be a part of some type of emotional holocaust that is being perpetrated on you is what it means to be emotionally safe. If you are not going in that direction, reach out to Kim. Reach out to her program. Uh, go to her website. 
make it a point to say, I'm not going to be afraid and at least check this out. That is something that we do here on Narc Abuse TV Network is we're not about clicks and follows and, and people liking what we post. We want you to reach out to the, our guests because they know how to help you. Find the one that works for you. And I'm telling you, if you skip on Kim, you're wasting your time. You need to take a look at what she has said and what she has done over the past few years. And I'm going to say few years because, again, I repeat, I'm much older than you. So, I'm just, so I don't want to say a bunch of years. So you have a way about you where you ease into someone's heart and into their mind and they still hold on to their dignity, but you still make your point and tell them that they need to do something without stealing their dignity. You're very discreet about the way you teach people, uh, even with your posting, but you're still very firm. And I love that about what you do. I really Thank do. You. I love that Thank about you. you. You don't play around. I think that Southern Baptist probably trying to get out or whatever. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that because because my, my dad was Baptist so, <laughs> uh, from Arkansas. So I'm just telling you, you got a way about you that that is very beneficial. Uh, so if you're a young person out there and you're just stepping into this area of understanding the relationship you're in, the abusive relationship, you need to at least reach out to Kim and her people and let her uh, be able to be a source of encouragement. I'm looking at all of these before we go, and I have to run, run them back to you now uh, from the three cards. A curious, fun-loving woman who was able to endure any type of oppression. That truly proves to be the woman in front of me. But what I find amazing about you, as you grew, you became this person who was hungry for knowledge, which you've always been. And by no stretch of the imagination did you stop there and just want to gain something. You wanted to achieve something. A woman who achieves great things for herself is who you proved to be before you ran into a knucklehead who wanted to <laughs> not, treat you, not treat you the right way. But there's no shortage of you in having fun because you recognize it's important to have fun. I'm, I'm leave the party word out. Oh, I just said it. Uh, so you gave up. <laughs> You gave up from being uh, a vigilante <laughs> and decided that uh, even though a social worker was a nice position, you went toward mental health, even doing it online. Well, yeah. I, I ended up being a teacher. That's what I got my degree in, and I was actually a teacher for several years, and I left that to do what I'm doing now. As a teacher for several years and stepping into the mental health field, you get a number of people tell you how much they appreciate you and the work that you've done. But when I, when I asked you to join me on this live, did you expect it to be what you've experienced so far? I, I was actually just feeling nervous because this is my first IG live. <laughs> Very first one. Um, okay. I honestly just wanted to be here for people. I really just, you know, I was just hoping and praying that I could say something that would touch someone's life. You, um, I had to bring up the nervousness uh, and try to move toward that before we end the show, because I don't even recognize the first person that was on who was nervous because you're, you're so relaxed right now. Um, so I need to end the show because you, you need to get some relaxation. It's evening where you are. Um, you have been, before the NARC, a successful, responsible, compassionate woman. You've built boundaries and become empowered. But if you had to describe what your life, just a little bit, was like when you were with the NARC, what two words can you think of that you experienced when you were with the NARC? Wow, just two words, huh? Mind-bendingly sorrowful. Wow. If you are hearing Kim's words and Kim's voice, and you're watching this, you watch this back in a replay, 
If you're experiencing what she just mentioned, then you need to, to speak to the woman who has successfully moved away from that. A successful, knowledgeable woman who has compassion and is willing to teach you and has years of knowing how to teach people. Um, you need to do that. Um, uh, as Rena says, God bless you. She's saying that to you. I'm just going to try to read these before we go. You're still, you're still teaching, Kim, as uh, Sassy says. Uh, you've taught me so much. Man, I, man, you you got groupies showing up here. You, everybody's loving you. Aww, everybody's love loving you. Guys. This is so good. Uh, uh, Carrie Ann Jones, amazing and knowledgeable lady. So wonderful. Sassy again says she's still very humble. Uh, I agree with you a thousand percent on that. Um, Carrie says that was that was such freedom. It was hard to get used to, but once we adjust, it is so liberating. They're agreeing with you about being empowered. Uh, Kim is literally the goat of this topic. I just love that expression for you, but it is really a true compliment for somebody to say that she is just so real and doesn't try to sell herself. I agree with you a thousand percent on that. Like other narc abuse experts. Um, let's see here. I agree with you a thousand percent on that. My goodness. So many hearts, so many flowers, roses for you. Oh, you uh, um, uh, the pack coach saying yes with, with four hearts. Uh, Carrie's trying to beat her because she's got five hearts for you. Uh, Jill <laughs> has got four hearts. You Look, you people, I'm serious. No, I'm not kidding. Kim, uh, leave no contact, go ghost, has Kim with a, a heart and then, uh, you know, are, are praying hands for you there. You got three roses. Uh, we are all worthy. We are all enough. Uh, this goes on and on and on. Kim, I appreciate you. Um, uh, the real Susie Waller uh, says Kim is amazing with the heart. Complete blessings. Um, I just got to let you have it because you never know the next moment somebody's going to tell you you're no good. You might as well take all these in right now. <laughs> That's what my father my father used to tell me that. I go like, well, they just told me that. He says, oh, absorb the compliment. He said, because two, two seconds later, somebody's going to tell you you're no good. So, you know, so uh, thank you for sharing. That comes from I am Celise, uh, who said she was 45 and she had to deal with her, her mom when she was younger. I love how calm Kim is. I said that to you earlier. And how your demeanor is beautiful guest, beautiful show. Uh, so much love here for you, Kim. I, I just I get to read all of these when the show shows is overwell. Um, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't wish that treatment or life on any human being. Sassy says, talking about dealing with a, no a toxic person, a narcissist. Feeling blessed to have found you, Kim. That comes from uh, uh, please please forgive me. I'm uh, Le Litra, Litra. Uh, if I said your name wrong. Uh, she looks like she's going to be following you if she hasn't, uh, boot, or already does. I'm sorry. That's one of your followers. Boot camp is awesome. Uh, she's glad that she found you. Um, okay. Somebody, okay. You guys got to stop having a heart war here. Everybody's trying. <laughs> everybody's trying. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of hearts. I'm just telling you right now. Everybody's got so much love for you. Kim. I can feel it. Thank you. Um, you should, you came here, uh, first segment, uh, I don't know, we're about 300 some odd people were in the chat, the second segment, uh, about the same. And, uh, I'm going to find out when I get done here, how many are here, but whatever the case has been in regards to the number of people watching in real time, uh, the goal has been reached today that you wanted to help someone, um, everyone in each one of the three episodes recognize that you are being self-sacrificing and being here and answering their questions and talking about your life. Thank you very much, madam. It's been a pleasant it's afternoon and evening. Uh, well, uh, I'm smiling from ear to ear, and I will be that way when I hit my pillow because you were here and made uh, so many people feel better about their life and not feel alone. All right. So um, any last yes. words before we go? Any last words of encouragement and positivity you want to share with everybody? Oh, Real quick, go to the boot camp, people. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, give yourself a chance. You know, stand up and be your own best friend. You know, you are the only person you're going to be with for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. So, got to love yourself. Go Thank for it. Thank you very much. You got, man, they love you, man. Look at the hearts going across the screen for you. All right, oh, all right, everybody. I know this. I know this is going to hurt everybody. I know you guys are doing stuff here. Everybody's still talking even while you're going here. So thank you, everybody. Community is thank so important. You. I see all your words, but we got to go. Thank you, Kim. Love thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank Love you. you guys. We'll talk Bye. soon. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay.